Hello, children. Old Cappy. Oh, I'm on hold with Betterment right now, about to kick their ass to the curb because they are going to lecture white people about having privilege. So, terribly sorry. Don't, not racist. Not racist. But there's a 30 to 60 minute wait on uh, Betterment. I wonder if people are saying, fuck you, we're not racist. Anyway, if I have to ditch, I'll uh, leave because I've been on hold for some time. But why waste time? Why not do some requests while you can? Hi, Cappy. How much would be for cl uh, Clary tests on the following? Klaus Bruinsma, Europe's biggest drug lord to this day and age, and Victor Bout, a Tajik Ukrainian black arms smuggler. So let's take a look at We'll do, uh, let's do Victor Clout first because I got him up. Or Victor Bout. Victor Bout. Uh, Victor Bout, who is a Russian arms dealer, Bout, an entrepreneur and former Soviet military translator, reportedly used his multiple air transport companies to smuggle weapons since the collapse of communism from Eastern Europe to Africa and the Middle East during the 90s, early 2000s. Bout was nicknamed the Merchant of Death and Sanctions Buster for his reported wide-reaching operations, extensive clientele, and willingness to bypass embargoes. On March 2008, Bao was arrested in Thailand on terrorism charges charged by the Royal Thai Police in cooperation with American authorities. The United States ambassador requested his extradition under the Extradition, extradition Act with Thailand, which was eventually mandated by the Thai High Court in August of 2010. Bao was accused of intending to smuggle arms to the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, FARC. That's, uh, was that the communist group or the, I think that's the communist group. Uh, for use against U.S. forces in Colombia, but denied his charges and predicted an acquittal. <clears throat> On 2001 of November, but was convicted by a jury in Manhattan Federal Court of conspiracy to kill U.S. citizens and officials, delivery of anti-aircraft missiles, providing aid to a terrorist organization, was sentenced to 25 years imprisonment. Since June 2012, Bout has been held in the United States Penitentiary in Marion. Mediums in Illinois. Oh. All right. So he worked until he was captured. I will include illegal gun running as real work, as that's more real work than being a teacher. Probably achieves more, too. Uh, Bout's origins are unclear, except the United Nations documents about himself both state in his birthplace as Danshanvi Tajik USSR, now Tajikistan. Tajikistan. And that his date of birth is most likely uh, 1967 January. Uh, a South African intelligence file from 2001 listed Bout as Ukrainian arm. Bout served in the Soviet Armed Forces, but there's no definite information on his military career, except he graduated from the Military Institute of Foreign Languages. His training allowed Bout to become a polyglot and master six languages. He's reported to be fluent in Esperanto, which he learned at the age of 12. Bout's personal website say that he served in the Soviet Army as a translator, hold the rank of lieutenant, discharged in 91 with the rank of lieutenant colonel, started an air freight business. Do, 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 do. Um, <clears throat> doesn't mention going, I mean, he went to school for language, but he actually he became a polyglot, which means he became a translator, so he actually worked at it. Eh. I'm going to assume he didn't come from wealth. I'm not going to give him a point against for his degree choice because in the Soviet Union, you really didn't have a choice back then. Not much. Went in the military and then started running guns and running his own, which is entrepreneurship. So he did come from wealth. I say he didn't major in stupid stuff. Has nothing but real world working experience and continues the theory would be working today because he got put in prison. Um, would I like to have a beer with him? Yes. Would I want him to run for public office? Well, well I appreciate his libertarian spirit, uh, but it, it probably not. Uh, I'd have to get to know him a little bit more and find out. It, what really, I won't lie to you, the fact that he sold arms to the like if he sold to the good guys, not the communists, I'd be like, okay, but he's making a buck whichever way he can. I guess one could say he's pursuing Operation Evil, like who gives a shit? Like, I don't care. The stuff I'm gonna sell is gonna be legal, but it's absolutely gonna destroy lives. Um, though I don't know if him and I would make good people to run for public office. We'd just be too tempted, like, um, 
Yeah, a nuclear weapons. Oh, look at this shiny button. Oh, California's gone. Jesus, dude. Now there's no problems. See how easy that was? <clears throat> so I'd love to have a beer with them. I don't know if I'd want them running for public office. If you could go clean and run a legit business for a while, maybe, but uh, ah, is he better than what we got now? Is he better than Jacob Fry? Would he be more? You think there'd be, I take this back. If Jacob Fry and Governor Waltz and the pussy uh, mayor in Seattle can run for office, this guy certainly can because there'd be less death. He'd crack down. Well, you think there's going to be some rioting, huh? That's cute. Very cute. All right, let's get the next one. So, yeah, he, he, you know, given the low shitty standards, yeah, a, a, a arms lord should run for public office. He absolutely should. All right, let's go on. Klaus Brunsma. I wonder if, um, what's his name? Napier knows this guy. All right, Klaus Brunsma, born in Holbenstraat in Amsterdam as the second child of Anton Brunsma, a Dutch entrepreneur, and Gwendolyn Teresa Mary Kelly, a British homemaker. He attended the the Bloggy Riga Carton Kindergarten in Amsterdam, Amsterdam Oid Zuid, and then the Sparta School, also on Oid Parents divorced when he was seven years old. From that point forward, his father's housekeeper took over response. Oh, so he did come from wealth. All right. Klaas's father was the founder <coughs> of the Dutch soda drink manufacturer Rock. He would make Klaas's three siblings clean bottles for the factory on Sunday. All right. All right. Here's a funny thing on Wikipedia. Occupation drug lord. Uh, he was the opposite of a loving husband and father. Uh, really? Was he the opposite? He made, he made the kids have a work ethic? Because if you don't have a work ethic, what happens? Oh, you become protesters like in Seattle and all over the place. Rinso later stated to his psychiatrist that the physical and psychological abuse of his father left him with serious mental scars. Oh, okay. Well, maybe it wasn't bad then. Uh, during high school years, Burinsma started using pot, later selling it himself. He was arrested for the first time at the age of 16. Well, at least he wasn't an arsonist. In 1974, he opted to forego attending college in order to dedicate himself to the drug trade full time. Bravo. <clears throat> Bravo. Uh, Thea Moyer became his main business partner, and together they set up an organization. Thea is the daughter of the Dutch mobster and a Singaporean heroin smuggler. While Barimza was mainly involved with the purchase, transportation, and distribution of the merchandise, Moira managed the finances. She kept track of income. Why don't we have a movie about these two? It's like the modern-day Bonnie and Clyde. She kept track of income and expenses, was also responsible for paying individuals who were hired to get rid of people who were not following the instructions. In 76, Rima was convicted but later released in 77. Upon his release, he changed his identity to Franz Van Arkel, nicknamed Lange Franz. He also hired professional kickboxer boxer Andre Brillman as head of security and personal bodyguard after his release from prison. Hired another bodyguard, and they started branching out. Uh, convicted again in 79. Released in 82, released in 87, went into casinos and gamblies, another legit form of business. By the end of the 80s, Burinsma became the largest drug trader in European history. His organization was generating around a million Dutch guilders per day. Given his large success, Burinsma was seriously contemplating retirement from this time in order to give himself full-time to his lifelong passion and hobby of sailing. <clears throat> However, Burinsma had one last big job. Oh, this would be the movie. This would be the sad end of the movie. He just wanted to write his previous wrong from 1979. He was planning on transporting 45 tons of hashish from Pakistan into Holland, much larger amount than what he got busted for in 1979. Shipment had a street value of 400 million Dutch guilders, $200 million. This operation became dubbed the Big Mountain. I wouldn't name anything that big, the Big Mountain. I'd be like the boring ass piss deal that shouldn't awake the authorities. Cappy collects fish, <laughs> spending time with the little ones, going to church. 
seized downhill, <clears throat> started using cocaine, and began extorting other Dutch criminals. Uh, oh, the Dutch Hells Angels took over. All right, so <clears throat> became in a liberal uh, argument, verbal argument with Martin Hoogland, an ex-police officer who was employed by organized crime at the time. Bruins was shot to death by Hoogland in front of the Amsterdam Hotel at 4 a.m. Hoogland was murdered in 2004 while being on parole. Bruinsmo did not leave a will. His brothers and sisters did not accept anything from his inheritance, so most went to his mother. Declared television. <clears throat> All right, so he worked till he was dead. Would I love to have a beer with him? Yes. Should he run for public office? Not really, but given the low state, you know, compared to Jacob Fry, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Compared to modern, compared to the mayor of Seattle, compared to the communist uh, bent that unlocked the uh, city hall in Seattle because she's a communist. Uh, yeah, he'd be better. He'd be more effective as long as he went straight. Uh, so, yeah, I guess he could run for office given how crazy, you know, compared to Governor Waltz letting everything go to shit. I guess if you're going to do nothing, this guy would be way better. I'd have a slightly higher standard for, you know, public officials and statesmen, but... Well, since we have no standards at all, except for fat, lazy dogs that roll on their back and beg not to be killed. Yeah, why the hell not? He should run for public office. So there you go. All right, that's it. Questions, answers, asshole, consulting.com. See you guys later. Toodles.